Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, Recording in progress. Good evening to all the participant. Uh, on behalf of Motila Loswal, uh, uh, we thank uh, Phenotex Management for their time. Uh, the sole purpose of today's call is, you know, trying to get a sense as to what is the two to three years business outlook call for this company. And as we all know, that they have developed a niche in the textile segment. uh have a leadership out there command good margins and also foring into two new segments which sanjay will throw upon so sanjay i think we have lots of participants uh, both from buy side and sell side what it will be very much important is that you know march 21 has been a challenging year for all of us uh you know so uh, we in that uh, full financial year we have done a 42 crore absolute ebitda despite the lockdown period even this q1 you know we had some challenges so how should one look at march 22 full year march 23 we all know that economy is opening up second is the textile segment which is your end user they are seeing a massive tailwind both from us side and also you know china angle you know so to that extent your customers have a solid tailwind here in india the economy is opening up uh, i think uh, the margins which you command and uh, you know the criticality of our product and the relevance uh, of that in the final finished product to the textile is solid so you know keeping that in mind uh, i would request uh, you sanjay uh, to throw an uh, you know initial outlook and then we will you know throw the floor open for q and a along with sanjay we also have aarti who looks at the front end and the entire sales and the global marketing we also have arindam another industry stalwart who have joined as the ceo assisting sanjay and aarti uh, to you know take the company to next level so we have three people from phenotex and i think uh, with this as a backdrop over to you sanjay and you know feel free to you know qualitatively highlight the important elements and the aspect or with what lens we should look into it over to you sanjay well thank you kenin and uh, i would like uh, arthi to start with her opening uh, introduction and remarks and then i will uh, join her as well as arindam ji will join her and then we can keep it open for question and answers perfect perfect sanjay uh, over to you arthi yeah yes uh, a very good evening ladies and gentlemen and i hope you all are well and staying safe this is arthi junjunwala and i take the pleasure of welcoming you all to the q1 fy22 earnings conference call of finotex chemical limited i hope you all had the chance to look at the financial statements and the earnings presentations uploaded on the exchanges and our website i would like to begin by giving you an overview of our business and the strategic outlook going forward Finotex is a leading specialty chemicals producer with a market leading position in the in, in the te international textiles industry. Our focus is to increase the company's opportunity size by expanding our portfolio not only in textiles but also in the home care, hygiene and drilling specialty chemical segments. The first phase of the upcoming brownfield at Ambarnath near Mumbai is expected to be commissioned by September 2021 this plant will cater to our portfolio expansion and increase our utilization of our existing and new product offerings the plant will be state of the art automated unit which will comply to high standards of sustainability and boost growth having said this i would like to hang hand over to mr sanjay tibrewala to provide an overview of the company's financial performance of the company thank you arpi thanks so yes uh, we have continued to deliver a robust financial performance despite the partial lockdown experienced globally actually in india as well in this quarter financial year 21 and it was the initial stages of dealing with a pandemic and but this year the company had again showed its resilience measures to be prepared and deal with the pandemic related business challenges uh crisil has assigned us a long term rating of a minus stable and short term rating of a2 plus to the bank facilities right now as such we are a debt free company coming to the operations and financial performance of the quarter the revenues of from operations stood at 633 million 
which is up by 108% year on year basis scaling up high margin specialty chemicals orders from both our core textile segment as well as the new business segment has aided the growth the ebitda stood at 98 million for the year which is up by 139% year on year basis ebitda margin stood at 16% expanding by 200 basis point we are focusing on expanding our product line to more diverse range the patch stood at 97 million in fy21 current quarter which is up by 18% year on year and margins stood at 15% at the same time we have also strengthened our management and um, with the addition of mr arindam choudhury who is the ceo he brings along with him two decades of deep insight thought leadership and vast experience from global textile chemical industry i will also like to him to continue and share his the updates of the company with all of you and uh, provide you some recent initiatives and strategies which we have announced recently and had uh, several press releases in the recent times in the last 2 3 months uh, over to you arindam ji hi uh, thanks thank you sanjay actually i'm uh, really excited to be a part of a phenotex team uh, and i am here to uh, jointly help uh, build the brand in a next phase of growth and our, our business is well diversified across key international uh, textile hubs at the moment but our aim is to grow our market share and strengthen uh, our existing relationship by uh, leveraging phenotex uh, and biotech obviously uh, in a strength in a both indian and international market Uh, we have uh, tied up uh, with the american concern called severia uh, who is basically providing the sustainable technological solution for the textile field for all top international client like levis vf corporation patagonia hnm by doing that uh, we will uh, place our chemistry better and more sustainable sustainable way towards the certification demand and it is a innovative method of assessing or scoring or you can say the certifying our uh, textile auxiliary the, towards a more human and environmental health characteristics and it is a need of the hour we cannot run away without any certification at this moment and this certification will help us to grow definitely our business in a multifold in next 2 3 years phenotex you know it is a leading transition from synthetic to lower carbon footprint product line and uh, we are playing a very very critical uh, crucial role towards a sustainable chemistry development and driving efforts toward our social responsibility because all the global brands are now asking what's new and how you will contribute a better way towards the environment so this is right time to invest on the certification and towards the social responsibility of with our product line and uh, with that uh, we have recently tied up with helgard australia uh, basically we are the global uh, um exclusive marketing and sales facility provider channel partner with a joint operation from malaysia base and uh, it will definitely help us to uh, broaden our product portfolio and we have installed new products in our kitty in our basket and we will move across the world with a sustainable solution to our every customer and this is need of the hour also because after the pandemic people are a little bit frightened with all these uh, you know antimicrobials and bacterial uh, activities across the space so phenotex biotech group jointly with helgard can provide and set up a fight against the pandemic and to be at par with the other developed economics in the world and uh, to strengthen our r&d and development team we have tied up with sasmira which is one of the state of the art research and development center uh, in mumbai and it is a premier textile institute also and we are lucky and we are uh, very much happy to be partner with uh, their r&d center to focus on a new and sustainable textile solution offering towards the reduction of the water uses energy consumption textile wet processing you know it is a time of innovation so as fast we innovate our product line and we can change our product line according the need and want of the customer we can get more uh, business share at the same customer end and also we can develop our new product line for access the better uh, the development in the market all all, all together so uh, we continue to strive towards uh, building of a company with a global brand and making uh, phenotex uh, you know is a synonymous with the quality and sustainability index with a higher face value and with this uh, we could close our opening remarks and we'll open the call for an interactive question and answer session thank you
thank you aarti thank you sanjay thank you arindam so i have first two question and then we will ask uh, other so sanjay uh, over last 12 14 month it seems that the unorganized segment uh, have faced challenges both at pnl and balance sheet level so is the phenomena visible in our industry also and because of which uh, is the entire organized segment will gain on market share front in our industry uh, versus unorganized and second is over last 3 4 months we have seen lots of raw material prices inching up so has it been the case with us and if yes what is the pricing side we have done uh, with respect to the final product price what kind of a price inch up or uh, we have taken or we are planning to take these are the two questions thanks kenan so firstly let me address to your first question uh, you just mentioned correctly the unorganized players are not able to you know they have been more affected with the with the lockdowns and the covid situations and then the organized players are getting the major share it is also because if you can also notice you know the government has taken a lot of steps towards etp management water we you know water drainage systems bod and cod and the organized players are the only ones who have that much capital and those kinds of you know expertise to have zero discharge companies and things at the same time most of the organized players are somewhere dependent on the export markets rather than the inter domestic markets so yes definitely after the gst regime we saw that jump from the the unorganized to the organized at the same time due to the covid situations and the kind of affluent management services and systems the organized customers and companies are definitely gaining more market share and at the same time the most of the european and american companies they are asking they are suppliers to be more sustainable so they have to be members of blue sign they have to be members of zdhc three levels and things like that so definitely the world is marching towards the big is getting bigger so that's what is been experienced in our businesses luckily for finotex it's always been into one of the you know the corporate customers like i always mention about right from chenna jct orodying auto textile mahavi spinning deepak birla vincent tc saluja trident wellspun simat singha ghcl you name it creative window counts and uh, jeshri you know you name the customer we have to be there remains remains uh, wapi plant or chinwada plant so you know wherever it is denim plants so basically we have been always been more depending and more focused on our organized market and they are getting bigger for sure so yes uh, that's definitely there you have rightly pointed out that point and regarding the raw materials you know the there's have been a global international changes which due to the containers and the liner shortages now due to that a lot of the products the supply has either become uh, maybe the supplier and you have gone mute yeah so what has happened is a uh, lot of supplies have been disrupted due to the container supply shortages and things like that so yes from last january we have experienced there has been a shortage of raw materials or temporary shortage actually not a shortage actually and then there has been a price movement because the freight cost has gone up inward similarly for our customers worldwide the price of the containers has gone up so their landed cost has also gone up to some extent however in our business as we have discussed once in the back uh, past also generally our prices it's not like a long term tender or something like this so we can always adjust our prices and pass on whatever you know hits we have in certain period temporary period or whatever and we can pass it on to our distributors and clients because of course everybody understands the same situation we all are in the same market and it's undeniable you know the containers are to usa which was earlier 2000 dollars have touched today 13000 dollars and that's also not getting available so this is certain thing which we all are experiencing now the good part of this is that many companies and countries who are not depending on india in the
Recording in yes, progress. Yes, yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, Ankit, go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Anji, sir, I w- just one question. Sir, the promises you are making with the kind of JV you are doing, are you are going to fulfill it? In spite of the last promises about your Aqua Strike that is gone zero, what are your comments on it? Uh, well, let me you know make your information more correct actually. So the commitments here is like Arindam ji can talk to you about the health guard in much details and the sessions will get on to a very long level actually. But yeah, of course, let's see, there are different things. Now let's talk about antimicrobials. Now antimicrobial, always there has been a market for it. However, if you notice, even the consumers, there has been a big trend change. And even us, if when we go to any malls or any shopping or buying an outfit, we always are now generally asking performance chemical fabrics. Let's say dust repellent, perspiration absorbers, antimicrobial, antiviral. So these are the trends which have picked up since last two years in a very unbelievable dramatic levels. In fact, to the extent that most of the European and American companies are benching out to a roadmap that all the substrates, all the fabrics, whatever they will be importing, garment or fabrics, they have to be well treated with the antimicrobials, everything, even for that matter, if you have noticed, Wellspun and Trident was also working on to a level where all their towels, whichever will go out of the factory, has to be treated with antimicrobials. The kind of demand is there for that. Hellguard is the only most sustainable chemistry in the world, which is much superior and it doesn't have any metals also, which Arindamji can explain in more details. Now, correcting your information regarding Aqua Strike, let me get to you on that part. So, in the mosquito life cycle controller topic, as you can understand from the logic itself, it is not a mosquito killer. It is something to be sprayed on the water and, you know, it's something like that, which for sure having the department's approval was from the W levels. Last two years, there has been no on those lines for sure. Again, having said that, there has been some small housekeeping businesses which Biotex has been doing. By the way, this product was developed by Biotex along with the IMO, which is the International Malaysian Organization in uh, which works with vector bone diseases. So that's a different matter. That's a working for the approvals. It's not a B2B business. It's business to government. Whereas the antimicrobial businesses, what we are talking about is something which has to be there for future. And even now, most of the garments and fabrics are treated. Arindim ji can talk to you more about, you know, the demand of this uh, antimicrobial and how important this has become and what are the developments which we are working on. Arindam ji, if you could uh, continue that part for... It's very, it's, it's very, I think it's very simple. You already explained all your positioning. The thing is that uh, with last one and a half year and almost uh, two year, uh, we, we, we got a huge demand on this segment uh, from every consumer and also the brand houses and the top uh, top designers. Even in India, if you closely monitor in last uh, one, one and a half years, people are talking about antimicrobial, antiviral in every spaces. Uh, either it is a school uniform, it's a uh, uh, uniform uh, for the, you know, the industry people or even the bed linen towels and everywhere so as we were not having this segment in our product range and we want to explore the market in a broader spectrum i think this is the best tie up we ever uh, can make in this kind of situation uh, where we desperately need a partner who already having the technology and we already having the market so in this synergy we can explore at least 65 or 70 countries where we are already present with Phenotex Biotex product and uh, we are hopeful even in the Indian consumer space also we can hold uh, 10 to 12 percent market share against the existing American and European fellow players and uh, this is a good business you know in a specialty niche market where uh, every uh, company in a specialty business want to explore for a better margin uh, and a better growth proposition also and I think uh, uh, we will show the results uh, in next two, three quarters, how we can uh, deliberately uh, promote this product in the multi-channel uh, of a brand and the end consumer space. Okay. Sir, just a just, uh, uh, follow-up on this. Uh, Sanjay, sir, sir, you, uh, for Aqua Strike, you have uh, told two, uh, 2000, uh, 2018 will be the deadline. 
and uh, now you are saying that uh, it's been two years. This pandemic has started in 2020, but in two uh, 2018 you have started saying that we at the end of 2018 or the start of 2019 we will get the approvals, but nothing happened, sir. That's really frustrating the investors. Please, sir, comment on this very. Oh, sure, I will. I will assess and uh, reply to every question or whatever uh, you know correct information any investor has. That's not a problem for sure. Like I said, this product line is not controlled by any businesses. This product line is controlled by the government. Now the government health department of India and uh, the WHO are not in anybody's control as such. At the same time, if you could also go through again our. discussions on the 2018 and the 19 discussions wherein we had mentioned that there has been a change in the process of the who and again there was a new kind of you know approvals and systems which were started so yes we have already updated our investors time to time about it in almost all our conferences and all the meets which we keep happening every time now and then so maybe we will keep you updated and kenin maybe you can be a, you know uh, uh you know make a note about ankit ji so whenever we can in, 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 you know invite them also for our next uh, updates perfect thank you sir thank you thank you very next much next question from aniruddha aniruddha you can go ahead Sir, for this uh, home cleanliness business which you we have started recently, uh, and what is the growth with respect to last quarter? Uh, second is uh, as uh, I think Mr. Uh, Chaudhary sir has mentioned that uh, no, Mr. Sanjay has mentioned that there will be a pass on of price increase in the raw material. So can we see the effect of those price increase in coming quarter? And uh, I just want to know this health guard. What is the market they are right now working with, and how, what is their share over there? And when uh, Finotex will have the commercial uh, realization of the whatever uh, products we are going to take from them? Well, let me answer a few of your questions, and then regarding health guard, I think we can also reply to you. Right. So yes, so you have almost five questions, and uh, let me try to answer that in the quickest time because there are almost I think hundred plus in uh, you know right, right. things happening. So let me be more brief. And again, all you know, all the participants, if you have any more queries which have not been answered because of the time shortage and things like that, you are always free to contact us or our investor search gate. I mean, investor advisors, search gate advisors, and uh, we are very much. happy and delighted to answer to your queries as fast as possible so coming to the question how much sales growth has happened in the cleaning and hygiene businesses so let me put it like this in the last quarter march ending we have hired almost 10 10 more uh, marketing team for the same and we just got our fda approval for disinfectant and for this line of product in january so we have got the fda pharma as such and after that we have like i said hired 10 more additional man power and after that we have experienced a lockdown so this in the cleaning and hygiene our main focus is on the institutional businesses now what is institutional businesses i'll let you know it's more about the restaurants food hotels corporate houses and buildings so that is the main area now as we all experienced the lockdown and of course for sure the restaurants hotels and uh, theaters miniplex multiplex and even the corporate buildings are not too much open or almost not open i can say for that matter so yes there has been there has been a growth of course and we are looking so that has been you know we have just started this quarter but going forward this is something which we are looking at we are now in this quarter going to hire another 16 17 more team members across india we already have 15 distributors for that businesses right now and the margins what happens in that see the gross margins must be more than 55% more or less however due to that you know this business is more having manpower and technical sales team that is kind of a business where we are into so yes the ebitda margins falls in the similar line what we are already having and so broadly this is the answer to that and uh, regarding the what are the price revisions and things yes you can experience certain growth in the ebitda margins in quarter 2 because in this quarter everybody is passing on their rice to the customers 
and uh, regarding the health guard and the kind of markets and when will we start the the business on health guard arindam ji can uh, you know, yeah. like mr sanjay just just one thing uh, so in short we would like to say the moment the market will pick up uh, like open up uh, the home cleaning will be the that particular segment will start giving generating more revenue like. oh yes perfect and at the same time just me let me tell you also along with that we have the polymer market in which we are supplying our polymers to the detergent market so we initiated that's a b2b business actually not too much of a b2c we are experiencing a good response on our product line there also and yes you can experience this quarter has to be much better than what has happened in the last quarter for that market for sure Great. and regarding the antimicrobial health guard mr arindam ji will update you on that well uh, it is basically the products portfolio are already present in the indian market but with, uh, no. with a different channel of operation so we want to hand over the channel of operation within next two quarter but we are open with the uh, other uh, global network in the global network we are experiencing a uh, uh, little bit uh, you know it it, it it is the marketing dominating business so as soon as we promote this product to the end customer space and we can notify the customer and our end customer that we have this product line in our range we can start generating the revenue uh, very soon so we are hopefully uh, you know it, it is a 100 million dollar uh, approx market share and uh, we are hoping uh, to cater at least uh, 7 to 8% of that segment uh, within next two quarter in a big way and our major market uh, will be the you know bangladesh uh, from biotech from we will operating from turkey and pakistan and uh, the middle east obviously africa latin america uh, indonesia so these, these are the market we are eyeing and we are accelerating our network to uh, penetrate every customer mind that yes now finotex biotech group have a partner for the specialty range and we will definitely try to generate the revenue as fast as possible and it is on the demand business also as the customer create the demand fast to the producer and the producer then come back to us so it is a solution driven business and we are hopeful that the revenue will start coming uh, from next quarters great so uh, next how from agam Sorry, continue. Yeah, Anirudh, continue. I was, uh, I just want to know, like, how, how, yeah, how well this health card has been, uh, like, brand value has been created in other markets, like before us, before FCL, how well it was placed with other markets. What you have mentioned right now. See, uh, uh, health card is a family-driven company since last thirty years. they are very very renowned company in the space of uh, hand sanitizer non alcohol based and the disinfectant specs and they launched their product for textile aspects 10 years back and uh, very recently they are widely renowned in uh, southeast asia market uh, there are some certificate and hinge for uh, in, in inverting the product line in american and european market with with our channel partner help they have just uh, complete the ocotec certification which is a german certification which is required to market the product in the european channel and european based customer also with our channel uh, we have established uh, green screen certification which is required for the american market and uh, we are just holding our nerves for one certification required for uh, canada and uh, north american market so that certification will be in the pipeline and due to the slowdown and the covid and all that us law scale has also diminishing little bit in a lesser space so we are hopeful by august end or early september that certificate also i can say that market share is mainly in the southeast and the uh, middle east including india india all top retailer including trident wellspun himas singha uh, crm they are already using uh, health guard products so as per the brand awareness they are very good only few certificate a hint was there which we already clarified from our network and it will be done uh, by early september so we are hopeful that uh, next quarters will be rosy okay great thank you we have next question from agam and agam you can unmute and go ahead and then we'll follow it up with hitesh i i think i just read one of your press releases where you are talking about fundraise so can you help me with that so you know uh, what are the plans or what's the road map uh, actually you are not so audible i think there is a some uh, and uh, is it comparatively now? yes better 
I'm saying I read in one of your press release where you're talking about fundraise. So can you help me on that? Any fundraise plan or something like that, which you have, and any roadmap or something like that? Can you talk on that? Uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, as you know, ten uh, years back after our IPO, we had a international mating acquisition of biotechs, and this is something which has been successfully driven from a debt company to an, you know, a cash rich and a growing company with highest level of sustainability with blue sign labels and things like that. So now that give us a lot of confidence of you know looking at a lot many opportunities. but as such as you must be knowing that finotex is very conservative and disciplined with its cash deployment and things uh, we keep eyeing on lot of opportunities which comes along the way so you know there are lot of uh, interesting things which are we are understanding and getting into so if something works on a higher level or advanced level we must be requiring certain fundings or something which right now it is not there is no road map to it but however that can always be considered for the future thank you that's it from mind thank you so much uh, hitesh uh, you can ask the question and then it's uh, nikhil rungta so hitesh over to you hi uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity uh, sanjay if i look at your uh, you know your uh, your margins they are like 20% plus uh, uh, also your return ratios which definitely up says that maybe it's it's a specialized business that you're in but if i look at your gross block and the revenue uh, you know the asset turns are are north of 5 5 to 6 times also you know more like a trading business so just trying to so definitely it's not a capital intensive uh, operation that you are carrying out uh, and your r and d spends are also not nothing significant so you know what is driving these uh, uh, healthy margins and what is the you know uh, uh, what is the uh, entry barriers for others to get into the safe space so well uh, as you have rightly pointed out this is not a capital capex driven business see let me tell you one thing which is very important for me to explain our participants we are into production of specialty performance driven chemicals and solutions now the word solutions is a very important word here it is not a coa driven business or an api business or a commodity business or acidic acid business where everybody's products are sold on a coa or priority or something our products are working for the consumer it is a specific performance and a specific purpose which meets it they are not bothered about the kind of the cost or the purity levels what is more important for them is to get the right performance let me brief up in like this question is, is very helpful for all the audiences actually so let's say in textiles we have basically classically four processes one is pre treatment which is cleaning then there is a dyeing process which is the coloring there is a finishing process to give the final finish to the fabric or the fiber and there is a printing process if at all applicable for the bed sheets and others now all these four processes together require 25 different functional chemicals now all these 25 different functional chemicals contribute only 3% cost to the user so basically every uh, chemical is contributing 0.15% cost to the user so it is something like changing the salt of the food generally people never change the salt of the food one because it is not too much of a value or cost saving and let it the salt be the same one which is going on because the outflow is not much at the same time nobody would like to change the taste of the food similarly i told you about the cost part now i'll talk to you about the changes problems if something goes wrong in the pre treatment hole ho jayega fabrics mein the fabric cannot be used at all similarly if something goes wrong in the finishing in silicones there will be silicone spots on the fabric and it will be gone for a claim and it will be cut it will be cut piece cell it will not go in meters so and also there is a big compatibility issue that all the chemicals should be compatible with each other and things like that so it is not and acidic acid business where gujarat narmada's product or taiwan or china product will be the same category this is a solution we call it like we are doing the homeopathy solution where we are curing the problem of the customer the customer pays us for whatever it is and that's the way it works we never lost a customer and the way we have been you know it's it's the, you know that's the kind of a business where we are once the solution is given to the customer so then the customers are always there it's a very high entry and exit barrier business now going to the point that we are already having cash on books now if that would be the if it was a capex business or something like that you would have already put all these things in the machinery and got the orders and things like that and that is rightly as you have said our turnover 
asset turnover ratio is more than 5 or something like that it is also because of the same reasons which i have explained to you coming to your topic of r&d uh, we are averagely having our expenditure of 1% on the r&d expenses and also as you must have noticed in one of our uh, press releases we have recently tied up with sashmira institute and that's one of the most important institute for any textile company in india at least so it is like that i am also an uh, you know alumni from sashmira as such and uh, rindab ji can also you know share out you know what all sustainable solutions and products we are going to work out in sashmira together so rindab ji if you want to uh, share some ideas in few lines of sashmiras what we are planning out there Please. basically uh, when when uh, people are asking that what is the investment in portfolio for the research and development so research and development is a wide wide spectrum and we 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 cannot that to the sponsorship or doing some research which will not be fruitful for future businesses so it is very uh, differential opinion from the what we want to move on how we want to move on with the technical space not only on textile and the other our all uh, oil drilling chemical surfactant business and all so sasmira being uh, uh, institute where chemicals has been nurtured in a very different way with all scholars phd's and researchers are working so we can jointly work upon with our customer problems uh, solution oriented business i just want to add with sanjay's one word when you say solution i i love to say is technology with service so when yeah. we have a technology we should have a service also because we are not uh, selling anything shampoo or soap we are selling a industrial chemicals which always need a service so in that space we have to identify we have to foresee in next 5 years or next 10 years what are the chemistry which should be uh, in a big demand so we are thinking and we are discussing with the all sasmira fellow uh, researchers and the professors and we try to intervene the customers also in a multilateral direction like what are the customer need for the cotton fabric polyester fabric re- renewability of the fabric and also this kind of uh, product line we are thinking and we suddenly come out with a discussion that we have to research with our product line to save the energy steam water because textile is a widely used at the specially driven by water energy steam and the worker de- dominated industry so if we can develop some solution for our customer where we can gear up and speed up their process they can save some water and now nowadays they cannot throw the water out they have to treat the water whatever they are using so we are thinking on this kind of concepts on sustainability drive and we are associated with uh, global institute institution also at the uk based institution where we are doing some joint work program on a neutral ground like sri lanka mauritius turkey where we want to enrich our uh, customer knowledge uh, with our specific solution oriented product and within uh, next uh, one or two years you will definitely know how what is our budget we are expended on uh, research work on the new product line which we are focusing for next 3 4 5 years and one decade you can say So, uh, just a follow up when you say you are offering a solution uh, is it the is it the case that you know uh, a customer or a textile player cannot uh, source chemicals from multiple vendors for different processes he has to source it from one vendor where the chemicals are compatible for each process is that the case see it is not a monopoly of a, any kind of product chemical as such but the utility of the chemical at the customer end you can specialized so when we say solution our team or our technical staffs who will already appointed and they are all high tech people and who have a industry experience of 18 to 25 or 35 years they know exactly how to resolve the customer problem within a short span of time it is a matter of time and it is a matter of efficiency how quickly you can resolve the problem so maybe the product portfolio or the raw material or the monomer may be same but how we can use that monomer or the chemical at the right time with the right molecular space that is important so it is a solution driven business no no i'm sorry i did not get you uh, maybe i did not put my question right the, the question here is uh, when you say you're offering a solution does the customer have to take the entire solution end to end for its value chain from one vendor so that you know there are no issues in one processes because of different chemicals that get you or maybe a different uh, vendor that uh, provides the chemicals it is it has to be one vendor providing the entire end to end solution is it the case see it is depend on the customer mostly as uh, sanjay said that we have 
four or five treatment and there are 25 chemical so in each treatment customer have a choice to go with a one vendor so we are now targeting in a that way we want to cater a highest uh, share of that uh, customer maybe we are present around with one on two products we just want to multiply with 3x at the customer space with the solution provided uh interim uh, you know we, we want to provide some solution we want to give our expertise solution with our product line to save some energy some time or some quality improvement in customer space and to cater uh, that five or six products in place of one or two products. Sure. Just one last thing. Uh, who would be you would be competing in the health card? Uh, the products coming from health card. Uh, who would be the uh, players who we would be competing both in India and uh, overseas? If you can name them. See, at this moment, uh, for health card product, we are directly competing. HEIQ is a European giant, and Dow uh, it is a American giant. These are the two main uh, com competitor at this moment. Uh, I don't think uh, India. You know, we are talking about a non-metal based chemistry. So the our, our, our all peers who are competing us, they are all based on metal based chemistry. Just for your idea and initial knowledge, uh, Mark and Spencer, IKEA, uh, all the top brand already banned this silver or metal based chemistry in 2019 or 2018 uh, very recently so we are working with the cosmetic based products with our high tech products which are high uh, you know uh, on the user's point of view we have uh, economy uh, over, over these multinational giants and we already proved that in recent past in multiple countries so we think uh, that with our uh, innovation in uh, non-metal uh, based space uh, where the cosmetic based products are highly, um, you know, uh, um, people are liking the cosmetic derivative products in this segment. So we, we can compete better uh, again, HEIQ and Dow. Sure. Thank you. Perfect. Nikhil, over to you. You have been waiting, Nikhil. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, sir, uh, last three months uh, uh, have been quite eventful for us, uh, say a tie up with Sashmira or uh, Health Card or bringing in Mr. Arindam on board. So, uh, and taking up uh, approval from the board for raising of fund to the tune of up to 200 crores. So, just wanted to have an update on an idea from your side, like this 200 odd crores which we are planning. So, uh, uh, as you just mentioned that you, you are also uh, eyeing some of the other acquisitions. So, in what space would you be eyeing uh, that type of acquisition? And second would be uh, like up to what level of, uh, what uh, size of acquisition you would be comfortable with? Like currently, like our revenue would be say 200 to 30 odd crores. So, uh, what could be the size of acquisition which you would be comfortable like we bought biotechs uh, just after your ipo and biotechs today is approximately uh, very small compared to the overall size of uh, finotechs so in the newer acquisition which you may plan what could be the size of that acquisition so thank you nikal ji i will let you know firstly regarding the you know the revenues uh, you know, as we had the last year, the first part was almost a COVID quarter as such for our businesses. I would rather ask you to work on our quarter four of the last year and then you can analyze it as our normal trend, what we are expecting for. Because quarter four was something which was not having the impact of COVID to that extent of the, you know. So from that angle, now coming to the point of what kind of spaces. See, as you have already uh, been, uh, you know, watching Finotechs and the way we have been moving forward. So we are a very disciplined company when it comes to cash on, you know, cash deployment and things like that. Until we find a lot of synergies and the right kind of a business line, a like kind of a profitable business line, we are not going to rush for anything which we are not knowing or we don't have the expertise. Either we should have the production expertise of those chemistries or we should have the application, uh, you know, the, the marketing end of it. So we are very much comfortable in doing certain things which we have been already doing. See, as such, we are doing polymerization. We are doing homopolymer, copolymer, terpolymer. We do esterification. We do phosphonation. We do sulfonation. We do condensations. We are doing, and also the polymerization we are doing of almost all the monomers, whether it's vinyl acetate, butyl, styrene, acrylic, malic, malic anhydride. You know, we are doing everything as, as you must be knowing about. So basically anything which fits in certain things, either from the chemistry production point of view and having application in different angle businesses, or at least going to the same customers, same, I mean, same kind of divisions and the businesses in which we can add on complementing our existing range, which is easier to do on those basis. 
so yes that's the kind of uh, comfort which we have in the right space we will require synergies for sure and the size now size is certain thing which is you know we will not go beyond a certain size for sure because we 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 are very much confident on the organic deliveries what we are going to do we have already you know it's it's beyond any doubt that if we don't double our businesses in the coming couple of years or something like that in the organic point of view now that is going very well as such so we are not going to go for anything in or inorganic which will be it either not having some kind of synergy or getting out of the size for us so it will be very conservatively streamlined profitable similar ebitda similar gross margins level so that's the kind of thought process we are looking at i hope this answers to your question nikhil ji and that's that's quite comforting sir Uh, yes. sir uh, uh, just second question our margins if i look at ebitda margin uh, uh, they have uh, trended down uh, i believe uh, because of the covid in this quarter yeah. but what would be the sustainable level of ebitda margin we should look at oh, well uh, you know on an average always we have been over the period of 3 4 years always we had around 19% 20% of average ebitda margins and as uh, you as, as also i would like to mention to our participants that 2018 and 19 we had done a lot of expansion in hiring marketing marketing team members technical team members lot of promotional activities exhibiting worldwide in almost all the countries whether it's brazil in spain in and in uh, pakistan iran sri lanka thailand you name the country and we have been participating ethiopia for that matter last year also so there has been a lot of expenses and promotional activities which we have done at the same time biotech also got the blue sign be hive reach and many more certifications which are all costly actually so you know we have been already been expecting you know that this would have given up uh, on a great jump by now but due to the covid everything got you know sluggish i can say if not reduce the momentum so yes uh, but however going forward i think the benchmark of 19% should be good enough so 19 20% ebitda margins because right now we have already sown the seeds we are just waiting for you know the covid and other things not to come and hit on the business activities and the consumer buyings so once it is sorted out i think we should be back with our you know expected line of ebitda numbers sure sir and i hope our uh, um, uh, facility should start by september yes we are uh, looking for the phase one initiation of course we all are in the same uh, you know uh, lockdown kind of situation in which commissioning always takes little more time because of the government paperwork approvals and many more things so yes uh, that's uh, something which we are keeping an eye on very very soon yeah sure sir uh, that's all from my side thank you so much thank you Hi, we have a question from Satya, followed by Levin, and last we will take Aniruddha. So, Satya Krishna, over to you, Satya. Yeah, Mr. Sanjay sir, first of all, uh, excellent results and a hearty congratulations for that. Uh, see, you know, I I don't represent anyone. I'm just from the retail side as a retail investor. Uh, one part of my question has been just uh, answered by in terms of your margins, you know. Uh, see, I have been seeing that you know your uh, top ten has been consistently doing very good and really a uh, impressive presentation. Uh, but you know, as uh, you claim, you know, if you think you know you can take the leap of faith for the margins, I think probably you know your company will go to the next level. So, and given your uh, you know explanation, right, that uh, you, know, you are able to, you are confident that you will put the inflation pressures on your customers. so you think uh, you can take the leap of faith in uh, your margins and question number 2 sir i see that your 21 uh, revenue mix uh, is skewed more towards uh, international you know 57% with uh, service uh, 43% uh, domestic so that's an excellent share uh, given that you know you are hedging yourself more from uh, you know domestic risk but uh, my question there is uh, two parts on the currency side one you th- Think you know, you are to going to increase. Satya, there are there is lots of disturbance. New side from the international side and two. Uh, I'm so sorry. Okay, uh, is it clear now? Uh, you will have to be more clear, boss. Yeah, there now, are lots. Yeah, there, am I clear now? Is, uh, okay, slightly okayish, I would say. 
Okay, sir. I'll put it very short on the revenue mix. Uh, you know, fifty-seven percent uh, international versus forty-three percent uh, domestic is an excellent mix. Going ahead, you think you know your international revenue is going to be more? And if yes, given your geographical presence, uh, you know, you think you are able to sustain any taper transfer, taper tantrums that is going to happen? Uh, probably six to seven months down the line. I couldn't hear the last uh, comments actually. But uh, Mr. No, no, sir. I am asking more from the currency, currency risk side, sir. Fine. Uh, we will move to Levin. Uh, Levin, over to you, Levin Shah, and then we will take a question of Anirudh. Yeah, yeah Levin, uh, you can unmute. Yeah, Chief. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. I am uh, new to the company, and uh, pardon my uh, lack of knowledge, but this. Uh, The tie-up that we have announced with Healthguard, uh, so we would be a uh, distributor for them, right? We would not be involved in any manufacturing. Well, I know. Uh, let me tell you about that. You know, there are two big uh, pointers here. There is a lot of investments which happens on warehousing, technical services, getting the registrations off from every country, having the right people, and you know there is a big. Uh, you know, so these things are not. taken as a small uh, you know it, it has each is equally important to manufacturing also getting the registration is like you know as happens in pharma registrations are most important and the products are being made by people so yes it is equally important there is no doubt about it there are a lot of hard work and activities which are involved now because our company and arthi has expanded finotex into many more geographies and even in the last quarter we have expanded to many three more big countries which is venezuela israel and syria which are the most difficult countries to do business with so we have a lot of tie up with everyone in the world across the world now this is something which cannot be replaced or somebody can have you know this is most important to have the rack to put have the channel and this is what is very important and i think that's also a lot of hard work from our side in terms of profitability if your portion is on the tops of profitability or the bottom line what is le left for bio uh, finotex and biotech you get be assured it will be much better or at least the same lines in the ebitda numbers what we have been doing today in the manufacturing also so i think you know if your question was towards uh, you know the the bottom line numbers or what are we going to do or what kind of roles we have so this is the right answer levin for you Sure, sure. That was very helpful. Thank you, and so sir. Much. Uh, uh, sir, a uh, follow up on that. So, uh, certain geographies that we have carved out, and we would be focusing only on that. And health card will go uh, in rest of the geographies on their own, or with any other distributor. That is how we have uh, negotiated the deal with them. And uh, secondly, uh, when we say that this hundred million dollars is the kind of uh, market uh, that is there for these products, and we buying like around seven eight percent. Uh, uh, market share to begin with. What is the kind of uh, potential that you see uh, two to three years down the line from this business? See, one thing, whatever we are telling you is more conservative style of approach. That's the way we always work on. So, firstly, the marketing. We are an exclusive global channel partner for Health Guard. Everything will be working on from Biotech and Finotech. Right now, the company is also being named and worked on. and all over the world we will be their center point for technical services by the way even if you go on health guard services health guard the websites and things any email what you drop comes to our email by the way so whenever wherever it is so for that matter so it itself means that all the inquiries and everything is been rotated through us only we need to strategize it we need to make our channels i mean we have the channels we need to put the pricing stable levels we need to make it appropriate to fight with the european com american companies also so that's the kind of you know uh, you know our roles in that business is and now the other part which you said yes it's a business of 100 million dollar which is growing which is still growing and growing and it will become a trend where you know it's something like that every every fabric will be antimicrobial treated for sure eventually and even the kids uh, kids baby care you name it and it will be on that lines and uh, yes we are looking at at least uh, 7 to 10% of the business in the coming times from the global market and it's doable oh. it will be done yeah sir just uh, last one thing so we would be exclusive uh, uh, distributor for elgard for this product sir right? yeah we will be we are not a distributor let me correct the word distributor distributor is another thing we will appoint the distributors 
sure sure so, I got so we are we are not the distributors or something we are their partners for that matter and this uh, this agreements and other things are very much in you know it's uh, it's a very stringent way of agreements and systems are well set i just give you an example even if anybody approaches on the website it, the email comes to us so it's something like that now i think uh, this is the most important thing for us to know about sure i got yeah. it sir uh, thank you and all the best sir. thank you lenin thank you follow up question from aniruddha aniruddha over to you yeah uh, hi sanjay uh, uh, again thank you for the opportunity uh, three things uh, when you said that you have uh, got some few more regions uh, because of the ex- uh, like the shipping cost of the china and all so what are the exact uh, growth percentage we can expect from that in the revenue part or, uh, or profit part second is uh, when we talk about healthcare as mr arindam had pointed out there are only two players uh, and those are very biggies so when we talk about the biggies and when we talk about the small company like health guard compared to dow then can we have a lot of price benefit that will help us to improve our margins more and the last question when you say a uh, lot of times that uh, you are conservative you are conservative in that case when we talk about uh, why why 50% growth uh, so that again is a conservative number can we expect more than 50% uh, well let me start with your first question it's about the new geographies which we are getting due to the chinese uh, china plus one uh, china plus one factor now this is something which is exciting to us it's very tough to give you an exact number of you know the kind of growth percentage of those countries which are coming to us right now china i mean in fact let me tell you you know the containers are in such a big a massive shortage that if there are many countries from where china has shopped the entire lining line there are no liners so eventually you know in the world after china india is the next country to produce chemicals from oh. more or less that's the way it is undisputedly oh. or maybe so you know this is the kind of uh, we are happy that you know this trends is prevailing and we are able to make more tie ups and you know once we make a relations like we never lost a customer by now so this is the kind of relations we work and the solution driven businesses performance chemicals and things like that so we are very much sure that you know this is going to pay not a, just for a temporary time it will be paying a long term result for sure so that is the first part not talking about comparing ourselves with the us companies which is uh, dow which is uh, heiq iq and all you know for them this business is just one of the product lines when it becomes just a small product line for any company let's say finotex is also suppose working on some product which is one of the very small business lines so of course the focus area it will not be the focus area now True. this is the point you know and this is the place where we believe you we always believe the big doesn't eat the small anymore the faster will eat the slower now the point is how fast we go to our channel partners and how fast we go to the end users in order to replace them of course there is a price benefit the price benefit is at least more than 20 30% that's not the point only at the same time this is sustainable the point is very important they are working on zinc metal and other chemistries this is non metallic number one at the same time the dosage of our products on the fabric is much lower so again you are having the sustainability approach so it's not only pricing of course uh, pricing will be much better that's that's not the usp of the product by the way so the plan is to conquer this market more faster that's what we are looking at and now your third question and your third question is about the conservative <laughs> approach year on year approach so now i i mean uh, as you might have read the crystal report also Right. and uh, they have also mentioned about the uh, the growth things they have interacted with our customers suppliers everyone almost and that's the way they have come up with certain uh, you know ex- expectations or something like this mm-hmm. and uh, yes i think this is uh, i think everyone should be happy if we are able to even touch the conservative expectations whatever you said about of course of course Yeah, I wish you best luck to touch those figures. Thank you, thank you so much. So I think uh, uh, we are more or less six. Uh, uh, Sanjay, there have been many questions coming to me, so I'll just ask you last two questions. A, what is the sustainable data's receivable day? So you know, one question was around that the receivable day. Uh, you know, uh, what is the 
sustainable because it has been inching up so any thoughts on that and last question is uh, based on the existing infrastructure team strength and whatever capacity utilization uh, what is the peak revenue we can do as a team based on existing gross block say you do a small brownfield expansion of 5 10 crore as a maintenance so uh, what is the peak revenue current infrastructure and the team strength and the gross block can help us achieve well i would like to mention your you know i like share your doubts on that so firstly sustainable debtors period as we all know if you notice our quarter 4 results the quarter 4 results we have already clocked something which can annualize to 280 crores or something like that so we have 290 crores annualized me agar quarter 4 ko dekhe so now if you are calculating the math it is always debtors at 31st march which was the gross most important month for us the march month and divided by the number of sales so naturally if you look at it the debtors to the number of days is higher and then after that there was been a sudden lockdown situation or half lockdown situation in india and also abroad so again that numbers you were not much you know can be said sustainable so if you can see our numbers before one year before the covid i think that's the right way to look at us more or less in 2020 financial ending march 20 so that's basically the right sustainable thing but however let me tell our audience and participants the kind of customers we are working are corporates now if let's say for example one of some big corporate of india whether it is chenna vardhaman or wellspun trident or whoever it is if there is a slight uh, you know due to lockdown there has been some stocks which are left at the transport or you know certain things it's it's very much digestible over the period of years there is no need to worry about for us or for the investors or by by and large and uh, coming to your second and the last question which you have given is about the utilization and the kind of uh, things which we can look at uh, let me tell you like you know we have already been investing now in ambarnath for expansion of our product uh, you know capacities and things like that right now also we have a entire mix and all our capacities are fungible this is very important for our audience and participants to know because the once the production is into fungible levels you can always adjust and make many products in the same facilities this is helping us to have better turnover asset ratio now going forward we are already working on you know the optimum level of capacity utilization is 75 in our 75% in our business right now we are around uh, 55 or something like that so we can all, always and plus with the new facility there won't be any problems even if we expect that in coming 2 3 years we can easily do double or more than that of the business what we are doing today so that's doable for sure organically perfect perfect that gives us a good perspective i think uh, uh, sanjay and the whole team you know you have been uh, uh you know quite uh, frank in expressing all the uh, you know outlook and the questions so on behalf of everyone and motilal oswal we really thank you for your time uh patient explanation and we wish you uh, great luck for the business trajectory and future growth if there are any specific follow up we will come back to you and uh, audiences feel free to write to churchgate partners or myself or to any of the members from phineotex for any further follow up good sanjay thanks once again thanks I'm participants just... thank you thank you kenan for organizing everything and thank you everyone for being so patient and listening to our answers perfect perfect thank you thank you so much thank everyone you. thank you bye bye thank you bye bye